What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's time to talk about my journey completing the quest, the stylish one, which was added a few weeks ago, and it's in order to unlock Killa's Adidas jacket or the Addict jacket by killing Killa 100 times. Now in order to complete this quest, you have to go into Interchange and complete the mission Keys to Success. Go to the wiki page listed in the description box below if you want to know where the location for those two books are. It's a really easy quest. It's the only prerequisite for this mission. When I first accepted this quest, I actually decided to do more of a slow and steady approach. Lots of people were just grinding this 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week, nonstop. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm gonna try more like three kills a day, and then I can go to other maps, use bolt action, snipe, PVP, do scav runs, kind of just mess around on the broadcast. And while I think this is a decent strategy for players that have a limited amount of time, uh, I think for broadcasting, it was probably not the best idea because I ended up having days where I would spend like five hours looking for Killa anyway and only having two or three kills. So I was spending lots of time looking for PvP, wasting lots of time looting Kibba and looting other uh, stores and uh, counterattacking players that were Killa farming. And this was a lot of fun and made for some really great content, but I think overall it delayed my ability to complete this quest in an efficient manner. Surprisingly though, I didn't mind playing Interchange as much as I did because it was one of my favorite maps before this quest came out. So I was running into a decent amount of fights against high level players, squads, and I felt it was very rewarding, not only financially, but also it was a great display of skill. And I had a really decent knowledge of Interchange going into this quest. So it was a lot of fun to kind of put that to the test, especially when fighting squads. Now the slow and steady approach was working out pretty good, but after about a week on the grind, I decided that I just need to put all of my attention on getting this quest done. Instead of playing out raids for PvP, I started limiting my time in the raids and tried to focus specifically on completing the mission. Eventually, I started doing interchange 20 to 30 times a day during a five hour stream and averaging about six to seven kills a day. There were some tough days though where Killa was just not spawning for me as low as like eight to 11%. And then there was other days where I was killing him over 10 times in a single stream. To my surprise, I was actually still getting lots of PvP in action. The thing about Tarkov is you can try to avoid player contact as much as possible, but at the end of the day, you'll still have to fight your way through the maps, and you'll eventually just constantly run into PvP anyway. So I ended up with some decent clips despite the fast runs. Now, thanks to Chlorine Tablet, a member of our Discord and stream community, he was able to track my stats on Interchange for the final 51 kills. I'll include that link in the description box below if you want to take a look at the stats, the weapons I was running, how long the raids were, whether or not I killed players, other scavs, or even Killa, whether or not I died to Killa. All the information is pretty much there. He did an amazing job. Unfortunately, we don't have the stats from the first 49 because I wasn't taking this quest that seriously. I did plan for that slow and steady approach before I decided to just focus on it 100% of the time. But using the information that we gathered from the final 51 kills, I can confidently say that it took me roughly 380 raids to get all of these kills. Again, some days kill a spawn rates as low as 11%, but some days as high as 44%. So we are bouncing all over the place. I also want to mention, because I'm sure I'll see it in the chat, that raids where Killa was killed by other players were counted in these stats. So we were not avoiding raids where Killa was just already killed by other people. And it was very rare that I was ever beat to the center of the store or died before actually checking whether or not Killa was up or not. Now that I went over the numbers, let's talk some strategy and some tips for those that are looking to complete this quest. The first thing you need to do is familiarize yourself with Killa's spawns. You can do that by checking out the link in the description box below to Killa's farming paths on the Escape for Tarkov wiki. Uh, you can also watch my VODs on my Twitch channel from the last three days of the Killa farm where I scored over 30 kills in a short period of time. It was like 30 kills in 15 hours. It was really efficient. I felt like I had the pathing and strategy dialed in. I was doing really efficient raids and I was using a really solid weapon that was getting the job done. Speaking of weapons, I highly recommend that you use high capacity rifles with low recoil attachments for stun locking Killa. For those that don't know, if you're applying damage to Killa, he will be unable to return fire unless he does his famous power slide. But even still, if you anticipate the power slide, sometimes you can fight your way through it. So my favorite weapons for this quest are the M4A1 with 60 or 100 round magazines. M855A1 does the job just fine. 
My favorite weapon would be the AK-74N with 60 round magazines, no less than BT rounds, BS or 7N39, or surprisingly, the AKM with the 50 round magazines, the new ones with BP. It worked out great, and I think uh, if you are looking to spend a little bit less money on ammunition, this is a really good option and a lot of fun. The biggest surprise of all the weapons that I tried on the Killa Farm was definitely the AKM, and I really want to use it again. Now, obviously, I used a wide variety of weapons on Killa's farm. I used the SR-25, the VSS, MP9N, P90, 5.7, SVD, and they all worked out okay, but I didn't feel like I was efficient as I could have been with other weapons. So when the server started to lag out, especially with the VSS, I found that I drained all of my rounds out of the gun and ended up getting killed by Killa because I wasn't able to stun lock him because he would like jitter around, the shots would miss, and then I would get killed. Or if I had to kill Killa through glass, I felt like the VSS wasn't doing the job, but I did get many kills with the VSS and the ASVAL. It's just near the end, I decided to put that weapon down because of that reason. I also used the SR-25, which wasn't that bad for the first 25 kills, but there was times that I was wishing I would just have an AK with 60 round magazines, and I just eventually started to use that instead. I think the most efficient gun for this quest is hands down the AK-74N with recoil reduction attachments or any 5x45 weapon because it is a self-sufficient way to farm Killa. More often than not, Killa will have his RPK with a drum mag full of 7N39 and lots of 60 round magazines. After each kill, I prioritize storing these magazines in my secured container. That way, even if I got killed by another player after looting, I had AP ammo ready to go for the next raid. And I would usually only take four 60 round magazines, one in the secured container, two in the rig, one in the gun. I found I never needed more than that, and if I did, it was a rare occasion, and it was not really because of the Killa farm, it was some other thing like fighting a squad or something like that. While farming Killa, you'll also have lots of class 5 body armor at your disposal. I had a ridiculous amount of class 5 body armor, I ended up starting to sell them for almost 300,000 ruples a piece, and then I always sell Killa's helmet directly to Skier for 150,000 ruples. That way, if I died, I would have lots of money to pay for a brand new AK. I already had the ammunition stored away, lots of grenades, labs keys for selling, morphine and cellua for using. I always used morphine and cellua. And honestly, after this killer farm, I'll probably just like stick to using morphine. I got lots of money. Morphine is really good for mid combat, but it's not the most efficient painkiller in the game when it comes to money, but it is really good for PVP and I'll probably stick with it unless I start running out of cash. Now, I know I'll probably get questions on combat stims because I've seen other broadcasters and creators recommending combat stims to their player bases. And I eventually did use the endurance combat stim and I played around with the strength stim a little bit for the last 20 kills, but it is not required at all. And here's why. Lately, with how popular Escape for Tarkov has been, I've unfortunately been getting lots of late raids, up to three minutes. I don't want to waste a combat stim on a raid where I'm three minutes late, Killa could have already been killed before I even make it into the store. And that's just a waste of a stim in my opinion. And although that didn't happen that often, I also found that I was rarely ever beat to Killa himself. I think the endurance combat stim does help in some situations though, and I recommend it only if you're finding yourself getting beat to the spawns by other players first, but it is absolutely not required at all. But another thing is thanks to my hideout, I have a 40% additional physical skill generation with the FP100 filter. And throughout these Killa kills, I was able to get to level 33 endurance. I believe this also reduced the amount of stims that I would need to use, given that I have a natural endurance stim thanks to skills. So, now let's talk about probably the most important part of this grind, which I think is the spawns. So how you play off the spawns. My goal, despite anywhere I spawn on the map, was to YOLO rush immediately into Killa spawns, no matter the cost. To my surprise, I was rarely caught out of position and rarely ever beat to the store or to kill a spawns, but it did happen a few times. So if you do this, YOLO rushing is really efficient and effective, but you will get caught sometimes by other players anticipating people running to the front of the store or throughout different areas of the store. So here on the screen right now, I'm gonna show you guys a number of different routes that I took off the spawn to get to the center of the store. All right, so for route number one, it's whenever you spawn in the middle field of Northwest Xville. You guys guessed it, we're running right for the open doors of Ultra. So as quickly as I possibly can, 
uh, jump over a couple of the fences. Just be aware that you will have some spawns directly to your right side. So if you're going to have competition, other killer runners, you're going to expect them to be on the other side of this parking lot that you're seeing on the screen right now. Another thing to really take note is watch the right side of the escalator. I don't really do a good job of that here, but Killa likes to sit there and can shoot you whenever you come through the doors. So once I move up into the store, I check the national on my right side. He likes to sit behind some containers. And then I go across to Viking. Viking is the most difficult one because there's two mannequins at the very back of the store. He likes to spawn behind those mannequins and won't shoot you sometimes because his gun is at a line of sight and he can sneak up on you and kill you. So you definitely want to take a look at those mannequins. From there, I go to Mantis, clear out Mantis completely, check all your little corners, head over to the Brutal Shop. There should be no problem spotting Killa inside Brutal. He's very vocal out in the open. It's pretty bright before making my way over to Adidas and Generic. Um, what's really interesting, I'm just noticing on the interchange Killa path, Generic is not listed and neither is Avocado. That is actually wrong. So you definitely want to go into Generic and make sure he's not hiding behind the tank. And sometimes, rarely, I've had it twice. He can spawn at Avocado at the generator out in the open, so that could be a little challenging. The next spawn point is going to be the far northeast corner. This one I dislike the most because this is going to put you at the most risk whenever you're going into the store. Directly to your right side is a spawn that is very close, and people like to go into the Aldi store from that position. And you're also going to have players directly to your left that are going to be running towards the Ultra or Ali entrances from where the scavs spawn at the oil tanks. In this particular run, I'm going up through Ollie, which is a little bit faster, but you might run into a little bit of uh, player activity to your right, or you might get uh, into a few fights with some scavengers. I usually just ignore the scavs and go right through to Adidas. Now, when you're going through, make sure your weapon's raised or aimed at those boxes before moving around. And in this particular case, this is interesting. I hear a player running through the middle section of the store. He's actually doing a clear that you just witnessed right now. So instead of actually moving forward, I'm waiting for him to do the killer clear before taking him out. And I know that killer isn't in the front of the store. So I'm going to grab his loot. I'm going to go check generic, all the final spawns. And then I know it's going to be a full clear. Now this spawn is the northwest corner, so I'm going to line myself up with the front of Ultra and beeline it there. This is the one of the most riskiest ones as well because directly to your right you have three spawns that are potentially closer to Ultra's entrance. Uh, and that could put you in a little bit of trouble. But if they're farming Killa, the good news is you can get behind them while they're focused on not getting killed by Killa with their positioning and take them out. And that happened many times. So this particular run in that spawn, I usually just beeline it directly to the doors. If I was a little bit more closer to Ikea on the left-hand side towards the Ikea sniper tower where you would consider going under to kill some scavengers underground in the parking lot, then I would go through in Ikea and then out towards Emercom. But for this one, I usually go through and uh, just run through the center like you're seeing right here. Going into Viking, clearing out the mannequins, checking the box to my right hand side in the National, moving through to Mantis, rinse and repeat. Next is going to be power station spawn. So I usually just run right through the parking lot all the way to the back ramp that leads up to Goshen. From there, I go through the back of Goshen or Gashan, however you want to pronounce it, and go right through the center. Now, you can choose two paths. You can go right towards Generic, so you can clear out the tank area in Adidas before moving towards Brutal and Mantis. Or you go the right side and you clear up towards Mantis, go through the center of the front of the store, and then back through towards Brutal and Generic at the very end. So both ways, I just play around with it. Sometimes I just want to mix things up, but both options are good. So as you can see, going through the center of the store, clearing it out before walking my way back. And there you go. As you can see, unfortunately, we ran to a Kiba farmer on that particular run, high level pistol player. But um, yeah, anyway, moving through nice and clear. Make sure you use these boxes as cover because he likes to sit behind these boxes in front of uh, Kibba. So you got to be super careful about that. But once Adidas is clear and generic is clear, that is really simple. I prefer to go through the back of Goshen than Ikea. I think there's just a lot more running and obstacles that you got to get through. And you're opening yourself up to too many additional attacks from PMCs that like to run Ikea into those tech areas that run the manager's office um, and running through the escalators from Ikea up through the center of the store. Um, in my experience, it was a lot better doing that particular run uh, through Goshen. 
All right, the next spawn is in between Southeast Xville and Ollie. So I always go Ollie with this spawn, but again, be super mindful of your left because you've seen the other spawn positions in this video already. So I'm always keeping an eye on that because you will frequently see players, especially if you are late raid, which can be super annoying. But once you're in the parking garage, I run directly to the destroyed ramp go up through to generic and Adidas from there and start your clear. But be careful because sometimes, rarely, Killa can be behind you at Avocado at the generator. So if you come up this way, there's a risk that you'll just get shot directly in the back and uh, that can be problematic. Now, sometimes, rarely, you see the area that I ran into right now. Killa can sometimes be in this position, but I find that he rarely ever spawns here it's usually a position that he goes to after he hears another player or after a fight has already started the same thing for above on the second level killa will never spawn on the second level and will never be up there unless a fight has already started in which the fight is either prolonged and doesn't end right away or um, a player is above trying to kill Killa and Killa tries to run up the escalators to kill him. So if you are very fast and you're in the beginning stages of the map and you're the first in the center of the store, you will never have to fight Killa above you unless a fight has already started. All right, I got two more spawn routes I wanna share with you guys. This one is Ikea parking garages, so right near the sniper tower where you spawn. I beeline it through the bottom of the garages, typically ignoring scavengers if I can, I kind of want to keep them alive because it lets you know if people are behind you also chasing you down so i'm going to just neglect to kill them unless it's absolutely possible then i'm going to go up the escalators that lead towards gashan and then make a decision again do you go right hand side and go to generic or left hand side and do the mantis run so once i get into this position it's very similar to other routes go through mantis clear it out up to the front of the store Try to look behind the mannequins, make sure I'm not missing anything. Clear out the boxes at National and the mannequins at Viking. Head to the front, clear it out, move through to Brutal, and then across to Adidas and Generic. And sure enough, he was in Adidas in this particular run behind the boxes. Sometimes he spawns in front or to the right-hand side of them, so you got to just be extra careful of that before clearing out and heading towards Southeast Xville. All right, saving the best for last. Southeast Xville, this is the most common spawn that I get on Interchange and probably the most famous spawn. It is almost unavoidable to not have to fight scavs when you spawn here. So you're going to have to make some noise, let people know on the map that you're in this position and you're heading into the store. Uh, it is very rare that I do not run into any scavs here. So no problem. Take them out. Do not go through Ollie. In my opinion, go through Goshen again. You get that decision. Go left or go right. Right to Mantis, left to Generic. Usually at Southeast Exville, I always go generic Adidas first and then out through clear front. So in this particular raid, though, you're going to be seeing an example of Killa actually spawning at Avocado, what I was mentioning earlier, which is usually not listed and is probably one of his rarest spawn positions. This is immediately at the start of the raid. No player pulled him over there. He did not patrol over there. He spawned at the generator at Avocado. It is a very rare spawn, but good thing that I picked up on it because if I didn't, I would have got smoked and it was a really easy, clean kill a kill. Well guys, that's about all the information that I have for you on how to complete the stylish one and my strategy going through and getting 100 kills. So to end the video, let's take a look at what reaching 100 kills looks like. That's it, we're done. It's over. Oh yeah. I feel like we leave his gear here. Let's leave his gear here and put the beard oil. All right. Oh, the sewing techniques for this one. All right. It's done. Whoop, whoop. The jabate. 
All right. Yeah, I'd say we have to wear like these pants, right? Because like we don't have the Adidas. Yeah, but well, these aren't that bad. I don't really know what the what pants we roll with it. But probably the tier twos. Oh yeah, definitely the tier twos. 